Oh, Foot Clan, it is that time. <laughs> it's championship week. We are ready to become hashtag Foot Clan champions. Champions? Yeah, I, I think hashtag so. Hashtag Foot Clan title champions? Yeah. But here's the deal. When you want to get a championship belt, a championship trophy, a championship ring, you go to fantasychamps.com, and right now you use the promo code free ring, one word, and you're going to get a $60 championship ring for free when you buy a trophy or a belt. It's an unbelievable deal just for the Foot Clan. Fantasychamps.com, promo code free ring. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Yeah, baby. Oh, it's going to be a good show. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers. I love you, Deontay. <laughs> oh. oh, me, oh, my. Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and a bear. <gasps> That's our crew today. That is... I guess the producers are here, too. That's true. That's true. I mean, we, we thought, hey, look, it's playoff time. It's championship yeah. week for most people. Right. We wanted to upgrade. So, we so went, sometimes it's addition by subtraction. So we went with the bear. We went with the bear. That's right. And uh, I well, think, lots going on for Chicago these days. I'm telling you this: Jay Grizz will be a little happy with my stream <laughs> of the week. I don't. I don't want to spoil anything. When you're staring down a grizzly, it's hard to tell emotions: happy, sad. It all kind of looks the same. Right now, when I look deep into Jay Grizz's eyes, yes, I'm getting the stare down. He's looking at me like, "Oh no, you didn't just do that." And I thought I, he was saying, like, I told you about David Montgomery. I told you. Mm, he sure did. <laughs> Welcome into the show. So excited to be here with you Tuesday, December 22nd. We had a Monday night football game. We've got waivers on today's show. We have streamers on today's show. And Jason and I are going to get you through it. I tried a new strategy today, Jason. Oh, let me hear it. Um, I tried a new tilt aversion strategy so i'm trying to avoid uh some tilt in your championship game yeah in my championship game that i just reached due to deontay johnson being able to catch the football in spite of big ben roethlisberger <laughs> yeah which we'll talk about but what i'm trying to do right here right now i mean it's tuesday morning i'm trying to declare my start Right now, and just oh, not waver. I love that. I absolutely love that. Now, why I, spend the week tilting? Right now, I know what you declared, um, and it was really dumb. But uh, let's hear it. Let's hear your stupid decision. I want to hear it because I'm trying to help you here. Right. You're you not going to influence me. No. Going, you just want to hear. I it. want you to have the confidence in your ridiculous decision. Go ahead. Who's one of my favorite players in football? Oh, Josh Allen. He's excellent. He's the stallion. I'm going to play Tom Brady over Josh Allen this week. Okay, and that's locked and loaded, right? That's locked in. You will not change this I'm week. I'm not going to change it. <laughs> oh, man. you It's the just, right decision. You just set yourself up for a week of more tilt than you've ever had in your life because up until that moment, you're going to go, I can't do it. I declared I'm not going to do it. Oh, I can't do it. And then at the very last second, you're going to put Josh Allen in and make a good decision. Is that the right decision? Tell me the matchups. Tom Brady is playing the Detroit Lions. They are the number one matchup for opposing fantasy quarterbacks over the last eight weeks, five weeks. Doesn't matter how you slice it up. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady was a couple of touchdowns from the number one quarterback on the week. He was awesome in, after the first quarter. As in they dragged his receivers down on the one twice and Leonard Fournette scored. Yeah. Uh, Josh Allen has New England on Monday Night Football in New England. Potential weather potential digs uh limitations okay am i making the wrong dis i i'm not asking that question yeah you tell the i people. made the right decision right you, this is the right decision we let the people know we're the one <laughs> we're the ones giving the advice what the here. right process is which is obviously to start josh allen wait um 
and so you know you you uh, you do you, as we say. The worst part is that I adore Josh Allen. I I love everything Yay! about him. Thank you. He's excellent. I tweeted about him for his entire career. I've believed in Josh Allen, but that that that's not what it's about. It's not about a lifetime of loyalty. I think he will have a fine week. I think the ceiling is higher for Brady. Every player out there has a different scenario. That's the whole essence of this show is it's contextual. I'm playing somebody that I think can put up big numbers. I don't think Josh Allen's giving me 40-plus against New England on Monday night with a limited potential Stephon Diggs. Mm, okay. He scored 14 points against them earlier this year. It's the only game of the entire year that he struggled. Divisional matchup, the pride of Belichick. I think he has a fine game. Okay. I'm, I, I think he's fully start-worthy. Tom Brady has a better matchup. Tom Brady has a better situation, a better over-under. Stafford's been balling out. It's a 54-point over-under. I'm talking to myself right now, aren't I? All right. Aren't well, I? Uh, yeah, because you're making the wrong decision. But ah. um, enjoy it, rest in it, and don't tilt whatever you do the whole week. How about, let's talk about last night's game. Yes, that's what we need to move to. Because that was excellent for you. You had Deontay Johnson, and there were literally only two players in that entire game remotely relevant for anyone in existence in fantasy football, and you had one of them. Eight for 59 on 13 targets. To and a me, touchdown. it looked like, I mean, just so definitively the best wide receiver they have. They cannot succeed without him. Juju was terrible. Awful. Chase Claypool was irrelevant. Not good. Eric Ebron got knocked out. Incredible story about that, by the way. I Did you not hear this I story yet? I have not heard. Foot Clan supporter had a point. One eight lead, zero point zero point one eight lead going into last night's game facing Deontay Johnson. He won because his opponent panicked at the last minute, worried about the Deontay Johnson drops, and played Eric Ebron instead in the flex position. Oh my word! Oh my word! And I understand <laughs> thinking that thinking it was the more guaranteed one to two catches because he just needed I, a catch. I. I understand that because if Deontay Johnson comes out and drops his first or second attempt and gets benched, he's a zero. I understand going, oh, I, I don't need a big game. I just yes. need one catch. Yes. And that, but the overanalyzation, the oh, fear. Oh, man. Eric Ebron gets knocked out injured. That's a nightmare. James Conner didn't play. So there you go. All right. And uh, so just to be clear, the other player than Deontay was that Benny Snell or was that Gio Bernard? Uh, I, guess, I guess I forgot about uh, Benny Snell. I was talking about Gio Bernard, but Giovanni Bernard is is really I, – I doubt many people picked him up to play him unless – here's the nice thing. The situation was if you were rolling on and relying on James Conner, yes. then you probably were fine because your pivot options were Benny Snell and Giovanni Bernard. So congratulations on yeah. – James Conner not playing. What do you do with this Pittsburgh offense right now with as, as undeniably awful big, as they look? Big Ben is super injured right now. I was talking is that to, what it is? I was talking to Brooks last night about this. I completely believe that when he hurt his knee a couple weeks ago, I think Big Ben is massively injured. There's just no other possibility in my mind. 38 years old. Of him being this bad it's like he forgot how to throw a ball as a quarterback except he's done it his whole life and he's probably a hall of famer so injury is the only thing that can make sense here this is the worst offense imaginable and the Cincinnati Bengals defense dominated them just wasn't close that's what happened it was really difficult to watch um, I don't remember the exact stat, but I think it, that might have been the first time in franchise history or in a long time that they've started out with five three and outs in a row. So very difficult to watch. They lost by 10 points to a quarterback that completed seven passes for 89 yards. That the, was his total? That was Yes, yeah, seven of 13 for 89 yards for the 27-point victors uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. Wow. 
Yeah, that uh, the stat ESPN first time in twenty seasons, including the postseason, that the Steelers went three and out on their first five possessions. So, and and the truth is, Big Ben tried to throw at least two more interceptions that they just dropped. So moving forward, though, looking beyond Deontay Johnson, three straight losses. I can't imagine you have confidence in Connor or Snell next week. Nope. I can't imagine that you have confidence in Juju or Claypool. Yeah, I mean uh, Deontay Johnson, just because he's the He's the clear number one target, the first read. He's someone that you still have confidence in, but I don't think you can start in your championship week anyone else here. And despite the Bengals' victory and Geo having two touchdowns, you're not starting him next week either. No, Tyler Boyd was knocked out. It's a concussion, so there's a chance he's not there next week with Higgins and Green, but, I mean, it's Ryan Finley. So Yeah, it's, ir it's irrelevant. He yeah. was gone the whole game, and Higgins had 31 yards. You want to talk news? Let's do it. News and notes from around the league. All right. There's a lot of news. Mm -hmm. Really, really important news. Big news. Starting here. Sean McVay. Cam Akers is going to miss at least week 16 with a high ankle sprain. The dreaded high ankle sprain. And this is what we saw. I, I know Cam Akers was very disappointing last week. And we talked about it. He, he got injured in that game. He got badly injured in that game now what's crazy is he came back I think he played over 80 percent of the snaps yeah he tried half. to keep playing but obviously I mean he's out with a high ankle sprain he was trying to play on it which is dumb uh that's how you lose to the Jets but yeah Cam Akers I thought he was going to be a league winner he won't be but maybe Daryl Henderson is yes next he week Daryl Henderson will start that will be significant uh additional uh, running back storylines here and I don't see us talking um, – I don't see it in here, but let's start with James Robinson. James Robinson's injury could very well be a high ankle sprain as well. There's no way James Robinson plays this week. You, I, you're without him. Just know it. It's not happening. But what if I needed him for my championship game? Uh, you and me both. I mean, here, here's the lay of the land for uh, the, the f footballers HQ. Mike is in the championship game of our league of record. Andy, you are in the championship game of the Dynasty League. And I am in the championship game of our Dino Junior League. So, uh, both of us have in our Dynasty Leagues James Robinson, except neither of us have James Robinson. He's not going to be there. And then, so, throughout the week, we're going to need to look at practice reps. Um, right now, I believe Dari Agumbawale is the better play. Uh, you saw zero carries from Divine Ezigbo last week. You saw four carries from... Agumbawale, but when you lose a guy, mm -hmm. sometimes the role changes. And I doubt that Agumbawale was is, is built. He doesn't seem built for that role the way Ozigbo does. And and that just means, uh oh. Yeah, I I, I actually think it will be uh, divine, divine Ozigbo. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I I believe he will be the the next man up, and then uh, Agumbawale will be used in the third down role. It's all irrelevant. Yeah, that, that, it's all irrelevant. This is a waiver wire show. We're like, yeah. who should you pick up? Neither of those guys. I'm not. I'm not personally fine playing. Uh, what is that? The Chicago against Chicago. Yeah, who in Chicago has really struggled over the last five weeks against running backs? But those running backs' names are like you know, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, those type of players, not Divine Ezekbo. Um, all right. Yeah. I mean, you're probably right. We'll talk more about it. Uh, Clyde edwards alaire is not going to be back. Yeah, maybe for the playoffs. So I know that they're kicking the tires with Elijah McGuire for depth. Um, you have Daryl Williams. You have Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell is going to be significant. Yeah, yeah. Lev Bell will be one of the pickups today for sure. Uh, Todd Gurley. His role has changed according to head coach Raheem Morris. Ido Smith is now the, quote, lead runner right now. Um, and so he's he's in the conversation for pickups. Now, if you look at what happened last week in the Falcons' uh, almost victory when they were dominating the game and needing to run the ball, uh, Todd Gurley was as bad as it gets, with the only exception of the the only other players I could think of that were as bad were Brian Hill and Ido Smith. Right. The, the, I mean, they weren't able to run the ball at all. Um, did anybody have 10 yards? Any one of those three running backs have 10 yards? I don't think so. I think Edo Smith had uh, more than 10 yards. Oh, man. Dominant. Which is just a, a different level. Six for 24. Oh, oh, oh. oh brother. Pick so. him up. 
Yeah, I mean, I think what you're seeing in all of these situations is there's a couple options beyond the injured option, and that makes you concerned about trusting any of them. Yeah, I mean, other than D Daryl Henderson. Right. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, activated from injured reserve. I'm old or enough. rather rather relevant, or I mean able to be activated. His 21-day window opened up. Yeah, I'm old enough to remember who this is. Right. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, wide receiver for the Eagles. You're yep. not going to pick him up and play him, but it's just another weapon in the Jalen Hurts yes. uh, weapon box. Arsenal would have been another word you could have used. Mm -hmm. That's better. That's better, better than, than weapon, weapon box. <laughs> but, you know, it's like you, you know what a weapon box is. It's a box of weapons. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jay. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Is there any other big time news, Brooks, that we need to get into? Any other injury updates that we have this morning? Not that I have. Any other running backs going down? Not yet. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Raheem Mostert is another running back that I doubt we see this week. So lots to talk about in the waiver show. Um, if we don't have any other news, then uh, we should take a moment and thank today's sponsors before we get into that waiver segment. Mr. Moore, when guys are confident, they don't settle for anything less than 100. Were you aware of that? Yeah, I'm not like, oh, yeah, dude, look at me. I'm taking it up to 75. No, no. We want to thank Head & Shoulders for supporting the show. Um, you know, we're the kind of people that like to take it up to 100. You know Brooks. He takes everything up to 100. Oh, for sure. $100 bills. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And if you want to take your hair game up to 100, you can trust Head & Shoulders. They give you up to 100% dandruff protection that means if you use it regularly you can prevent up to 100 percent of visible flakes and get hair that looks 100 percent amazing and that's what we're all about here bringing your teams up to 100 bringing your hair up to 100 you can take your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders available online at walmart so check it out and we want to thank simply safe for keeping our homes our our arsenals are if you're brooks oh, all of his picassos right um safe completely protected and the easiest best way they have high quality equipment that you can install yourself you don't need any expert to come you don't need long-term contracts the price is right the security is great we use it here brooks uses it at his manor and if a bear tried to get in would it alert you I would be, I I would be simply safe. Okay, that's what I would be. Yeah. Um. Look, they've they have an arsenal of sensors and cameras to protect every inch of your house. Set it up in thirty minutes. No long term contract. It's great. Right now, you can get a free home security camera when you purchase a Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash footballers. You also get a 60 day risk free trial, so there's nothing to lose. Visit simplysafe.com slash footballers for your free security camera today. Once again, that's simplysafe.com slash footballers. Put me in, coach. And Brooks, so far most of your wealth has been protected. Are oh, you still in good shape? Oh yeah, I've got the I've had the door sensors going, and I'm hooking up two motion sensors tonight. I will. Are be. you really? Yeah. So you've you, that, that's for the additional yeah wealth it's, it's that the new, you've accumulated. It's the new wing he just put on his manor. Exactly. The truth man. is, if if you went in and stole say one to two million dollars of fine artwork, right. He probably he would never know. He yeah, would that, never I, know because it's just like that's why he needs the sensors. He wouldn't notice it himself. It, he wouldn't notice it himself because there's just so many Rembrandts. Yes, and uh, Al Al has taken quite a few without him knowing. Oh yeah, why? Do, how do you think Al has a Rolex? Yeah, that was originally uh, Brooks's. Right, right. I love this storyline. <laughs> it's uh, my new favorite it, bit. It is my new favorite thing. Your wealth. All right. It's week sixteen, Jason. It's championship week. It's been a while since we've just said thank you yeah. for the fact that we've gotten to this point where where we've had uh, people playing and the NFL has is has reached week sixteen and every single week of the season has gone on, gone as scheduled, with the sole exception of just moving days. There was the one game and with Tennessee early in the season that actually moved a week, and outside of that. Nothing has missed. So hopefully we're not jinxing anything here. 
and the championship you week. You can't jinx 2020. 2020 is jinxed you. That's true. There's no way to do it. That's true. It's always got the upper hand. But here we are, thankful for football, thankful for the Foot Clan, and now yeah. we, we might need a wide receiver off the waiver wire. So let's talk about the options. Uh, in the probably rostered category, there's, there's one man, and he's infected. Oh, yeah. A lot of people this year, and that's Cole Beasley. There's no cure for the Beasles. I mean, week 15, 10 targets, 8 for 112. Has New England. New England should be without Stephon Gilmore, which is huge. Significant. Yeah, um, it's, it's really important for Josh Allen, um, who <laughs> should be started. Oh, no. Here's a, here's a reality. Um, New England is mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. They have absolutely nothing to play for as far as getting uh, better. Their injured players will be rested. Gil, that, you know, that's, that's why we know Gilmore won't be back. Um, and the Bills are playing for you know, the seeding. They, they, they want home field best they can get. So it's an important game for one team and not for the other. I love Cole Beasley. You don't know the health of Stephon Diggs. He's probably rostered, but he is available in 30% of leagues. And he's someone that you could – I mean, in the championship weeks, this is the, this is the thing that's difficult with waiver wire section. Usually, we're talking we go really deep. But we can't go deep here. There's no speculative ads into the championship week. This is can you play them on a good roster and improve the good roster? I think Cole Beasley is a yes. Okay. I don't know how many other people are. Yeah, that's fair. And we'll talk about a few options. I think the ones that jump out, Russell Gage after the 10 targets, 5 for 60 and a touchdown last week. Look, we've been here before with Russell mm -hmm. Gage. It's a bit of an up and down situation, and it's tough. It's week 16. It's Kansas City. They'll be throwing the football. Russell Gage is an option. He, he is an option. He's had two good weeks in a row. But I'll be honest, I don't want to rely on Russell Gage because he has disappeared many, many times. He's had the opportunity. Russell Gage. He's had the opportunity so many times. And look, last week, he got the opportunity. He came through. Uh, five for 68 and a touchdown. 91% of snaps. I'm, I'm sticking with the process. Sure. The Rulio 11, it obviously didn't happen last week, but... If you just look at a large enough sample size, there's always going to be outliers. I think last week was the outlier, not the new norm. I'm I'm out on Russell Gage. Yeah, and to dig a little deeper, Atlanta got up to a big lead, which they're they're great at. Right, because that's what they love losing. And they can't lose a big lead right. if they don't get it first. But that's where he made his mark. We've said it before. Matt Ryan is not a garbage time come from behind quarterback. Are they going to get up to a big lead against Kansas City in week sixteen? It seems very unlikely. That scenario could, that narrative streak could, could hurt you here with Gage. So would you go with the other options in Houston? So would you go with Kiki QT? Yes. Who's available in 70% of leagues. I, I would. I, th those are the two wide receivers, Kiki QT and Chad Hansen. Mm, bop. Yes. That I am, I am interested in. Now, it's hard to pull the trigger on these guys in your championship game. I don't, I don't believe in them as <clears throat> much as. I believe in the talent let, let of me set Beasles. You up. Let okay. me set you up with a, a more difficult decision. Yeah, I believe Cole Beasley is the better play over all of those options. But let's say you've been riding T.Y. Hilton. You are a little disappointed last week. They play Pittsburgh. You're going to have Joe Hayden. You're going to have Minka Fitzpatrick. You're going to have maybe some limited upside with, with T.Y. Hilton in Pittsburgh. Are you playing Kiki QT over T.Y. Hilton, or are you staying with T.Y.? No, I, I, I think T.Y. Hilton is a bench this week. Um, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I would not want to play T. Y. Hilton against Pittsburgh. Um, he's had now four decent games in a row. Three of them were were great, but the matchups were there. Uh, you know, it was it was a really nice run where you could see that he should be started. Now there's you know there's plenty of reason. I mean, you just named the corners that say no. This is not a T. Y. Hilton week. Uh, Kiki Q T has Cincinnati. Chad Hansen, obviously, Cincinnati. You prefer QT to Hansen? I do prefer, yeah, Kiki QT. He is, he's been more targeted. He's been very relevant. Both of these guys are, are good, but I, I prefer Kiki QT over Hansen. Tyron Johnson is a name to throw out there as well. He is available in every league. Again, championship week, you probably are set up and you probably don't want to go here. But if Keenan Allen is out, 
Justin Herbert against Denver. Tyron Johnson, two straight weeks with a touchdown. Yeah, I it, it it's I mean that's a glory play. That's if you're in your league and you want to make a move that T. Y. Hilton, Tyron Johnson with Keenan Allen. How do you not play if T. Y. Hilton Allen, there? If Keenan Allen was out, I would I would play Tyron Johnson. Oh my. Yeah. Um I've got some decisions to make this week. I was going to say, you, you you keep going back to T.Y. Hilton. Is this a on-your-roster decision I, whatever situation? Whatever do you mean? Okay. okay. I'm, I'm you know, one with the foot clean. That's we right. all have, a we lot all have the of same people decision. out there have those decisions. I, I like that. I have T.Y. Hilton, Kiki QT, and Tyron Johnson. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That's that's Kiki QT. I'm mining for data. Yeah. Okay. I think it's going to be really hard for me to move Kiki QT into lineup over T.Y. Hilton. Oh, oh yeah, With, I get it. Because it's big play and it's PPR. Like I don't, I Kiki QT is is he played less snaps than Chad Hansen too. Yeah, but he had. I mean, Chad Hansen only had three targets. Yeah, I know. Uh, whereas Kiki QT had seven targets. <laughs> yes, it's tough. <laughs> Let's talk about some running backs because this is where the storylines for this week really exist. Daryl Henderson, uh, own uh, rostered in fifty nine percent of leagues. He's Could out, be out there. He is absolutely out there in enough leagues. About forty percent of your leagues, he is available, and he is. Is he far, number one? Far and away, well, the number one. He's pick number one over Lev Bell. Oh, by by ten miles to me. Ten miles. I believe that the Kansas City Chiefs can have an entire game where they don't play a running back. That, that Andy Reid doesn't need to pass the ball. If, if they're up big and they're running the clock out, they still pass the ball and they just do it differently. I, I I mean, obviously, the touchdown opportunities for the Kansas City Chiefs are always there. So, Lev Bell could get touchdowns. Um, he should be picked up. He is one of the important waiver wire pickups this week. But to me, Darnell Anderson, a.k.a. Daryl Henderson, <laughs> is the number one pickup because with we, we've seen him succeed. We've seen the Rams running game be excellent. And the problem with Daryl Henderson was Cam Akers, and Cam Akers is out. Seattle's defense, though, you've been you've been kind of prescribing them in recent weeks, and Marlon or uh, you know Brown is an issue. Yeah, uh, you know J.D. McKissick was very good against them this past week. Uh, the the Giants had success and ran all over them two weeks prior. Uh, the the you know they stopped the Jets two weeks ago, but I I I think. Uh, I mean, if I'm playing in a championship game and Daryl Henderson is out there, you have to pick him up, even if you're not going to start so, him because you don't want your opponent to start him. Let's make this more complicated. Would you mind? I, d I don't want it complicated. No, I'm sorry. It's week Softballs 16. Softballs only. Here's the more complicated decision. We don't know the status of Ezekiel Elliott other than to say that Ezekiel Elliott was inactive late in the game last week. I see how you're going to make it. Yeah. And so Hard. Tony Pollard is... Less rostered than Daryl Henderson, than Le'Veon Bell, uh, than anybody. He's about 34% on ESPN, 46% on Yahoo. But you don't know if he has the job. You don't know, but he represents tremendous upside. Number one running back last week. Yeah, if, if Zeke was out and you could only play Daryl Henderson or Tony Pollard. You're playing Tony you're Pollard. You're playing Tony Pollard. That's where I'm at. But tomorrow is waiver day. So you have to make a, a judgment call. And how do you make that call between prioritizing Pollard with the risk that he's he's a second option versus Daryl Henderson, who you now know is the number one option, versus Love Bell? Yeah, I mean Pollard would Pollard would be my number two option personally, uh, and the reason that I would lean Henderson over Pollard is is obvious. It's the fact that we know his situation. Cam Akers has a high ankle sprain; is not going to play this week. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott was a surprise inactive. They were expecting him to be there. He's gotten an extra week of rest, so now I would be surprised if he's not there this next week. So my expectation is that Pollard will be irrelevant, and because you have kind of a known good thing versus an unknown great thing, I'm going to take my known good, bird in the hand. Okay, I think that's good analysis. What is bird in the hand? How does Versus two in the bush? That's a dumb saying. Is it? A bird in the hand? Well, Why I mean, is that maybe... valuable? Well, because you think there are two in the bush. You're not certain. But why do I need a bird? 
I mean, well, that, like, that's what I'm saying. I mean, like, it's a good place to start, I suppose. Why do I need a bird in my hand? If you need a bird. If you, if you need, need a, bird, a bird, it's better to have one in your hand. It's better to already have one in your hand than think that maybe you can grab two in the and bush. that's why that's a stupid saying. Because nobody has ever needed a bird in their hand. Would it be better if it was like a chicken? <sighs> nuggets. Like a fried chicken? <laughs> like, better to have chicken nuggets in your hand than <laughs> at a restaurant hoping they're not out of stock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think I think that gets a little too deep. Yeah, it it doesn't have it the sounds same. more delicious though. It sure does. All right, um, guaranteed carries though that that's in a a part of the process for the waiver wire. Um, what if I could guarantee you twenty twenty carries? I would say, what is your name? What if I said I am infinite and I am all and I am eternal? That was my fear, and I would say. No, thank you. Frank Gore, last week, 23 carries against the Los Angeles Rams defense. Yes. Ends up with 59 yards, but a touchdown. If you have no Mostert, you have no Robinson, are you playing Frank Gore? Are you playing Edo Smith? Are you playing I would Le'Veon play, Bell? I would play Frank Gore over Edo Smith. I don't believe in the Falcons' running game at all. Um, Ito Smith has, you know, the, the he has the ability to be relevant this week. But I would take Frank Gore's known rushing attempts. <laughs> but I don't want either of these guys. I mean, this isn't even like Frank Gore is someone that I don't think I would even play keep away with. You know, I'm saying if if I'm not going to start him, I'm not worried if my opponent picks up and plays Frank Gore. I I I'm kind of I want that out there. I want him to have like a solid seven and a half points on his fantasy lineup from one of his players. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not playing Frank Gore. We had a story last night of keep away gone wrong. Did you see this where, uh, cause this is a big part. I mean, part of the waiver wire show today that should be mentioned is you are not just picking. You might not need anybody, but your right, opponent you're in the championship, you got a good team, right? But your opponent might have an injury or they might have, um, been streaming quarterbacks or, or 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 defenses, and you can play some defense, but it can go wrong. Like last night when uh, we had a Foot Clan supporter um, submit a priority question and said that their opponent played keep away from them and and took, I believe, four Steelers away from them. Mm, I did, leaving hear this. them just one player left, and that player they were stuck with was Gio Bernard, <laughs> and uh, they won. Yeah, so. All right, uh, so do you view the Falcons' backfield or the Jacksonville backfield as the... Uh, I would rather rely on the Falcons' offense as a whole, scoring opportunities higher over under um, if I have to pick one of those two backfields. I, I, you know, It's funny because last year the Jaguars were terrible, and usually you don't want running backs on terrible teams, but Leonard Fournette was a volume play and was great even though he stunk. This year you've got an undrafted rookie free agent in James Robinson, who's been great on a terrible team because of volume. So the volume could be there, but eventually, eventually the water runs out of the well, right? You, it's not an infinity well of water, and I feel like I'm not relying on Jacksonville's offense. I don't want to do that. You can't make me do it. No, I can't. I would really be looking at starting a Miami Dolphins running back if you have the ability to do it because, you know, Salvin, uh, Savan Ahmed – Yes. Savan Ahmed is a super interesting name. He is in line with Tony Pollard to me in the sense that if he is it's Las Vegas, if he is available, he absolutely needs to be picked up. Um, he could be irrelevant. If if the gas man is back, it's been two weeks. The gas man should be back. I believe that Miles Gaskin will be the starting running back. And and so he might be someone that's on waivers because he was you know unavailable. Maybe he was dropped. Take a look at the Miami backfield. Both of those players need to be rostered. Whoever has been the starting running back has just gotten a ton of volume, dump off targets, plenty of carries, goal line opportunities. Uh, I, I expect it to be the gas man this week. I'm going to throw one more name out there at the very, very, very bottom. Well, maybe two. Darrell Williams. Chiefs running back, if for some reason the Le Love Bell got hurt twice in this game, the post game made it seem like he's fine and he's going to take over. So I, Darrell Williams is at the bottom of the barrel, but he is next man up. And then the Jeff Wilson, Tevin Coleman, 
Jarek McKinnon situation. Jeff Wilson came out of the game injured as well, right hamstring strain, ankle sprain. He is questionable for week 16. If there's no Mostert, which we don't know definitively, and there's no Jeff Wilson, which we don't know definitively, then Tevin Coleman's the next man up. Not for me. Not for me. Not for you. That's right. Not for me. The next man up is a boy who's strong, as he called himself, Jarek McKinnon. Uh, not me. Not for you. Here's, no. here's no, the reality. Tevin Coleman would be for me. Tevin Coleman, um, when he's come in the game over the last couple of weeks, and there's only been a few opportunities, when he's been in the game, he has looked bad, incompetent. He looks like someone that is not physically right. D-U-N, washed. Uh, like, I would not rely on Tevin Coleman. I, I think he – So he's maybe, like, It's like Todd Gurley. If Mostert and Wilson were out, you aren't trying to gamble then with the backfield? I would gamble on Jerick McKinnon. Because McKinnon I th could have zero. Absolutely. But Coleman could have negative, so zero could be the I better option. Uh, all right. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think if uh, it's Arizona, Saturday game. Hopefully, you have better options. All right, so this is the very bottom of the discussion. So. Okay, we've we've talked through these players. Let's rank our top three or four in order. Um, you know, I think we both agree. Daryl Henderson. If is, I have to have a running back start, Henderson's number one. If I don't have to have a running back to start, I'm going to put Pollard one. Okay, either because way, I, they're not playing for anything. They could sit down Zeke again, and Pollard could be um, electric. So I I think I would go those two number. Those are the top. Beyond that, then, I'm going to go offense. Uh, I'm going to go with Love Bell. Mm -hmm. And then, at that point, I take the shot on Ahmed just in case Gaskin's not there. We, we, are, we are identical. I, okay. I would go Henderson, Pollard, Lev Bell. And when, when you say Ahmed, I would go either either Ahmed or Miles Gaskin. I would, I would put Gaskin ahead of Ahmed if they were both on waivers. All right. Which is possible if people let go of him after the COVID situation. Tight end waiver wire pickups. This is it's crunch time at a position that is very difficult to project because you're looking. If you don't have an established tight end, you are looking for a touchdown. You're looking for upside. You're looking for potential. If Logan Thomas is now out there, who has been unbelievable, 15 targets, he is absolutely the number one pickup. He's available in about 50% of leagues yeah. across platforms. He's he's without a doubt the number one pickup. And and there was a huge whiff last week because I was scared off by Dwayne Haskins. Oh, um, and Logan Thomas has just been so utilized. And apparently Haskins saw Logan Thomas be excellent with Alex Smith and was like, oh, I should, I should throw to that guy more. Um, so Logan Thomas is number one. Number two for me, and I think is a good start this week. I think you could pick him up and start him is Austin Hooper, who had a disappearing act after his appendix disappeared. But last week was back, was involved. He was in on 70% of snaps, had five for 41 and a touchdown. But the matchup this week is as good as it gets against the Jets. They bleed points to the tight end position. So those are the two I would roll with. I don't, I don't know that I want to go much deeper into the you may not want to would you roll with the po with the postman dan He's arnold three for 54 dan arnold is at a, at least a big play type of tight end he is not a dink and dunk cole Komet around um the line of scrimmage competing with another tight end like if you're going to get a big play it's going to be dan arnold um that's what you get when you miss with the postman the postman has delivered recently he has delivered. This is a tough conversation. By the way, Dwayne Haskins might not even be starting this week. There's some Dwayne Haskins news breaking right now. Social media posts, unmasked in some uh, establishments, and there's a decent chance he's unavailable in week 16. You could have Alex Smith back behind center. So uh, what? What a what a dummy face. What an absolute dummy, dumb, dumb. He's the quarterback I trying know. to have a future in the NFL. Gets his opportunity back and then makes boneheaded decisions not trying very hard no no not a leader no doesn't seem like it uh i i definitely you know when i'm looking at this week and the starts of the week and looking at options that are deeper at tight end hooper came to mind i'm still a little bit worried about it but baker's been on fire so i i get it 
I get it. It makes sense. Jordan Akins was five for 50 last week. I doubt anybody wants to hear me talk about Jordan Akins, but as Cincinnati, um, Irv Smith, if Kyle Rudolph is out again, is always a touchdown threat. And uh, I'm going to I'm gonna bring him up again. Tyler Higby. I don't see him in our list here, but Tyler Higby, over 80% of snaps, a couple of touchdowns over the last three weeks, could have struggles with the running game. You know, there's a reason Cam Akers was starting over Daryl Henderson. And uh, it's a pretty important game. So there is the chance that Tyler Higby is involved again around the goal line. He had a season high in yards last week. I don't know if you realize that. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a great play last week. The matchup was there, and, uh, you know, they, they, they needed him with Akers being out. And, you know, I mean, when you're down against the Jets. Right. It's, I mean, in... That, that's the beginning of a bad sentence. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, but to that point, that's why I really like Austin Hooper. I mean, you saw Higby have a great game against the Jets. The Jets are a prime matchup, and I would, I would, I would pick up and play Hooper. All right, defensively, this week, who do you like more? Browns defense against the Jets, the resurgent uh, Jets. Y yeah, you, you're done. Texans you, uh, defense against the Bengals. No, nah, I mean, just you said, who do I like more? I don't know that there's anyone you could pick up potentially off of waivers that would be a better pickup than than the Browns. What about the, the Jets? What about the Panthers against Washington? What if Haskins and Smith don't play? So I can't even tell you who third on the depth chart is right now because Kyle Allen's out. Yeah, no, no. So it's fourth on the depth chart, and I have no idea. It's got to be a practice squad type of player that we haven't heard of. I'd yeah. be I'd be shocked if I've heard the name before. Whoever oh, there. Um, it's Taylor Heineke. <laughs> I am not shocked. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, the 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 Browns are an important pickup and play, um, or keep them away from others against the Jets. I know the Jets had a good game last week. That's the outlier. Um, the Cardinals' defense is sneaky this week. Yeah, the Forty ers are going to be starting C.J. Beathard. Nick Mullins didn't mention it in the news. He's going to miss time. So. Cardinals against C.J. Beathard, they've been uh, they've been good at getting sacks over the last couple of weeks, so that would be another option, just to bring others to mind. Because the Browns, if if your league is with it, they probably got picked up with Week 16 in mind. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to find other other options that might be available out on the waiver wire that has a good matchup. Um, what about what about the Eagles with? With Jalen Hurts and the ability to slow down, have their defense play better against Dallas, would you be willing to play the Eagles defense against Andy Dalton? Yeah, I mean, I don't think Dalton's going – you're trying to avoid getting blitzed. Step one, don't get blitzed by the opposing offense. Don't get destroyed by them. I don't think Dalton's destroying the Eagles. Right. But they're behind the Cardinals. They're behind the Browns. And honestly, they're behind – they're probably behind the Texans. The Texans' defense is not good. But the Bengals are going to be without Tyler Boyd, without Joe Mixon, with Ryan Finley, who just passed for how many yards? 89? 89. Yeah, and a lot of that was predicated on short field. There, his touchdown came on a fumble from, you know, the the Steelers. So, yeah, I, I, yeah I it's, it's, in the, it's in but, the mix. But the thing with the – so the Texans and Panthers, great smash matchups. I love their opponents. But what I really don't like is that – their defenses aren't good. And I just hate playing a defense like No, the, I know. I the do Texans too. defense is bad. The Eagles defense is a good real life defense. Yeah. I, they have a, a few more playmakers. I, I could see, you know, if you need a a a, a bigger score, I, I would go that way. Okay. Let's talk quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. All right, streaming quarterback situations. Um, I mean, I I guess I started the show talking about mine, potentially. I love yours. I was wanting to have this player as my stream of the week, but unfortunately you were in the show doc first. See, I was actually alluding to my Tom Brady over Josh Allen, the fact that I was going to make a pivot at the quarterback position. Mm. That you have, you know, been very supportive of throughout the show. I do support you pivoting. Back to Josh Allen. Baker Mayfield is my streaming candidate for this segment. Um, Baker Mayfield is 
playing great football, you can, I think it was Collinsworth talking about, you know, you just kind of sense it, the way he's playing, the confidence. There's no hesitation in the throws, the dropbacks. The, he's facing the Jets. Jets are the second best matchup over the last five weeks for opposing fantasy quarterbacks. Baker's on fire, four straight top 12 weeks. He's feeling it. Yeah, Baker ba Mayfield, Jason, or uh, Josh Allen. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it, You're not pivoting if up If I have Josh, Josh Allen, Allen, I'm playing Josh Allen this week. I mean, I, I can't imagine not playing Josh Allen in my championship with how he has looked, how he's been a true dual threat. I mean, if Stephon Diggs is out, then I will look at, at pivoting. Or if the weather is really, really bad, which I, you know, as of right now, we're still, you know, almost a full week away. The weather doesn't appear to be a problem in New England. But it, other than a digs problem or a weather problem, I'm not pivoting off of Josh Allen in the championship. And I, I don't, I don't think you should either, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could totally abandon this anti tilt strategy any minute now. I'm, I'm just here to make you tilt. Uh, to, Mike, to... Mike wants us to bring up Jalen Hurts as though he's a streamer. Well, he's probably not available, but if he is, he is an absolute 100%. I'm going Mahomes now. You, yeah, if Mahomes is on your waiver wire, just take a peek ski and you want to pick him up and play him. I would recommend that. Well, he, here's the problem. People have this question. I've seen it popping through because I may have publicly pronounced my Tom Brady over Josh Allen situation. There's a lot of comments. Jalen Hurts or Josh Allen? You oh, just yeah. said you're not pivoting. Who well, are you going there? So I am playing... Uh, in the championship against Kyle, the Borgogan, our editor. He he is last year's champion, so he's trying to be champ champ. And yeah. I'm champ champ. So I don't I'm not standing for this. And he has Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts on his dynasty roster. Sure. A lot of people do because Hurts was a late season pickup. Yes. Well yeah, or in a dynasty he was just, you know, fodder on the bench back of the rookie draft. And uh he is playing according to him, he's playing Jalen Hurts. I think, so, I mean, you're talking about a caliber that is, like you said, not streaming. If if Jalen Hurts is out there, you're going to pick him up and play him over Baker, even though Baker is... Is there anybody you're playing over Jalen Hurts other than Patrick Mahomes? I think that's the real question for the week, genuinely. that We could simplify the entire situation for every listener out there right now in this moment. Um, Yeah, I mean, I, I would play Aaron Rodgers for sure over him against Tennessee... Uh, I I love that matchup. Um, okay. I'm, I'm gonna play Kyler over Jalen Hurts. All right. Um, and Brady. Lamar Jackson. I mean, that's the that's the most interesting one to me because I feel like the name. It's not just Jalen Hurts. It's Jalen Hurts against the Cowboys. Right. That's the whole decision making process here. Yeah. Um, man, Jalen Hurts. I would play Jalen Hurts over Lamar Jackson. Yeah, so I mean, it's a top five option this week. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to to go back to Baker, if Jalen Hurts isn't there, if Patrick Mahomes, uh, if Patrick Mahomes somehow isn't on your waiver wire, which I'm sure he is, um, Baker is a great pickup. His last four games, he has been he is averaging 308 yards passing, uh, as well as two and a half touchdowns a game. That I mean, those numbers are are fantastic. The matchup is great. I love it. My stream of the week, I'm going with Mitchell Trubisky. I've gotten in trouble with Mitchell in the past. Um, I would definitely go, obviously, Hertz or Baker ahead. Um, but if those options aren't there, or um, you need to you know play against a streaming opponent and play keep away, and Mitchell's the next best man up. I think the matchup this week against Jacksonville is good enough, and what he's done with the Chicago Bears offense has looked great. I mean, I'm, I don't want to start Mitchell Trubisky in my championship, but I do think when you look at this week's guys available on the waiver wire, if Baker's gone and Hurts is gone and somehow Mahomes isn't there, Mitchell Trubisky would be the next guy I would focus on. Okay. That's the, that's the least ringing endorsement I can give. If if all else fails, and Mitchell is still there, then then I will take him. Yeah, I mean that's kind of I mean it's week sixteen streaming quarterback segment. So you're doing your job, but you're hoping that your job is irrelevant for everybody listening. Yeah, in that department, uh, we didn't give an injury update to Stephon Diggs. I did some digging over the last uh, hour. There's not I mean, a lot of alarm. You didn't even realize you, you did some digging. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. You didn't even know. Yeah, I didn't. Well done. Yeah, uh, 
I would hit the applause button. Right, but, but we don't have we one. Still, don't. I don't think have we it. need to give him that. I just worry about. Well, yeah, baby. That's not. I mean, yes, you got to toe the line. Oh, put, what, that needs to be on my board immediately. I don't know if that's going to be good. Oh, that's going to be we, great. Can we? Can you program that to be like, uh, like capped on a week? Yep. Like a certain amount That's per right. week? Uh, 55. Oh, gosh. Cap it at 55. I won't use it more than that. All right. Honestly, you don't do that many things that I could push that button for. All right. <laughs> All right. So you, you cap that button. Yeah. What's your dynasty team saying about that? Uh, my dynasty team's in a championship. All right. Um, beyond full stream ahead, the Diggs news I was going to bring up is, you know, he was seen celebrating in the locker room after the game, after the big win. Uh, head coach Sean McD- or, uh Sean McDermott came out. He had no real big updates on it. Seemed like he avoided major injury. The foot was a concern. Oh, that Don't is great. Get news. your finger away. That from is me. great get news. Get your finger away. Yeah, is- baby. I got the button. Oh, brother. I mean, we made it to a thousand shows. We might not make it another 10 mm, if right. he's got that button. All right. That'll do it for today's show. I think we'll have Mike back with us tomorrow. I believe so. And uh, good luck on your waiver wire. It's going to be a fun week. Take care, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. Oh, and Foot Clan, do not forget, do not forget, we want to thank Pristine Auction, James Robinson, a signed Eclipse alternate speed mini helmet yesterday. $81 from Pristine Auction. $71 if that was your first win and you used the code BALLERS when you Right, because up. you get $10. That's right. $10 off. From BALLERS. From the BALLERS. 10 from, yeah, all right. PristineAuction.com, use the code BALLERS.